Hello and welcome to The Rabbit Atheist. I'm Ed Raby, a former pastor turned atheist, now compassionate anti-atheist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like and share this video and join The Rabbit Nation, a nation of people dedicated to normalizing atheism and deconversion, by hitting that subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel in a more tangible way, hit the join button and your membership options that lead to citizenship in The Rabbit Nation will be presented to you. Today I'm starting a new series called Seeing Behind the Religious Curtain. The inspiration for this series was a Facebook post by Jim Palmer, which I will link in the description. Jim was a former megachurch pastor who is now a non-believer. He recently wrote a post that contained 14 things that the misguided religious establishment doesn't want you to know. His hope is that by considering these 14 things, the re reader would disentangle themselves from religion and live a better life. For me, I found these as great ways. I was also talking about the deconversion and, and good issues to help people deconstruct their old religious lives and build new ones. So for the next 14 weeks, I'm going to consider these talking points, these 14 points, in that light and see if we can learn something that will help us reconstruct our lives after seeing behind the religious curtain. The first of Jim Palmer's points is this. Toxic religion is rooted in fear, especially fear about the afterlife. It leverages the false doctrine of hell to win converts and demand holiness. The fear of God's disapproval, rejection, abandonment, and punishment is another hallmark of toxic religion. I absolutely agree with this. Everything in religion is rooted in a fear about the afterlife. We fear death, and many religions take advantage of that. In several religions, the fear of hell, burning forever, or simple annihilation is something that increases that fear factor. Now, religion has absolutely no proof of any afterlife beliefs. No heaven or hell has ever been proven by any kind of data or research. And some kind of glorious infernal end is just no evidence at all. There's no data, no pictures, no video clips, just assertions. Most of the people believe in heaven and hell simply on the basis that some preacher told them that heaven and hell existed and then caused them to have fear about heaven or fear about hell and then want something like heaven, which when you really think about it is kind of ridiculous. The fear that is used to uh, by this, by religion, is used to keep people in line, mostly. But it also is continually leveraged to keep human beings doing what the religion wants you to do. A fear of God and what God will do to you is one of the biggest motivators for controlling behavior. Holiness is nothing more, is not really so much about bettering your life and making you a better person, but it's about building a better life so God doesn't disapprove of you. And that way, at that point, you lose your salvation. <clears throat> the fear of God's disapproval, which leads to punishment, keeps people coming to services, giving their money to their organization, doing free labor, and living a lifestyle with a very channeled opportunities. People don't want to have sinful opportunities or do things that, disapprove, that God disapproves of. And so you take only certain opportunities, and a lot of good opportunities for you pass you by. Religion does this through the fear factor of the afterlife. Getting over this fear is a struggle for many people. It is interesting, I do hear very often, that the belief in God for many atheists was easy to let go of. But the doctrine of hell kind of emotionally stays in the back of your head, <clears throat> that people continue to have anxiety about it long after they have stopped believing in God. But I think it is a testimony of fear as a powerful doctor indoctrination tool. And religion uses this, particularly with the doctrine of hell, to hit people hard and hit them where it hurts. Okay, And so they continue to have this fear that's neurologically tapped into and then encoded over and over again. And so the fear of it takes a while to get rid of. Once you do realize that this all is fiction and they really don't have any proof of any heaven or hell, you begin, it becomes the inevitable end to your fear about it once you begin to think about it. It becomes more like fearing being annihilated by Bethanos snapping his finger. It's fiction, and so it loses its emotional punch, but it can take a while. Deconstruction about this issue <clears throat> is very slow sometimes, and you slowly lose the fear factor and the fear of the religions that use the fear factor. You begin to become generally less afraid over time. For me, the hell fear was a very real thing from a neurological point of view. Even though I stopped believing in God, this emotional fear that would trigger every time somebody would talk about 
you know, hell or afterlife or whatever, would still kind of hit me every once in a while and just zap me. <clears throat> Emotions can be hardwired and with triggers that take a while to rewire and the triggers have to be removed sometimes over time. But for some people, that can take quite a while. And it really depends on your individual circumstances, most notably how strongly was the fear factor of hell indoctrinated into you, how much was fear used as an indoctrination tool in general. A lot of different factors can happen in this. My recommendation is to actually study various religious views of the afterlife. Over time, you begin to realize, man, I don't really believe in any of these because they're ridiculous. And then you just add your own to the list of ridiculous afterlife stories. Okay, over time, you can see how human beings simply have desired to have some sort of escape from death. And that <clears throat> is really the motivation behind a lot of this. And religion, toxic religions in particular, tap into this. Um, they kind of grab a hold of you and say, you're afraid of death for a reason. There's this hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And all of a sudden they tap into that fear and that fear doesn't really allow you to rationally even consider if such a heaven and hell even exist. And that's the problem. Reconstructing this means accepting a couple of things. That you are finite and will not continue after death. And two, this is the only life that you get. Now, that has a lot of impact on your life. Fear gets replaced by an appreciation for life. I have a lot more joy than I used to have. You begin to realize purpose is also temporary, and that is okay, as many things have a very valuable temporary purpose, and that includes you. Doesn't mean that you have to, doesn't mean that you don't have value, it just means it's temporary. The reality is that life is a rare and finite thing and is more valuable because you're the only one living it, and two, it doesn't last forever. You and you are, your life are valuable because it's the only one that there is, and it is temporary. Now, my personal testimony on this, I've talked about many times, but I think it bears repeating here for just in brief, that one of the things about reconstruction that has really helped me is replacing fear with genuine joy of life. For me, I find life a lot more enjoyable, um, watching my grandkids grow up, knowing that those moments are never coming back. You know, whenever I hug my mom, I realize that might be the last time. Okay, and so you tend to take those moments and be more appreciative of them. It doesn't mean you live your life with guilt trips. That's the other thing that goes away with the whole fear factor here, is getting rid of the guilt trips of things you didn't do or don't do. That's life. Okay, things happen. And it's not always going to work out for you and be advantageous to you. But it doesn't mean that you can't live in the moment and appreciate the moment that you're alive. That with life, there is, in some sense, hope. That you're always going to be able to find a way, maybe, to be live a better one. And for me, this has just kind of taken root. You know, I started to push myself into other avenues to try to accomplish things with my life, realizing that I don't have a lot of time to do them. And at the same time, not being fearful about it. I don't want to be motivated by fear, but out of a sense of accomplishment and joy for it. That my temporary purpose on this planet can have some benefit to others and to myself. It's okay at this point to realize that you know, the fear factor takes into, takes into itself this selfish desire to live forever. It is really a selfish desire. And you start to begin to realize, yeah... It's okay that I only live for a little bit of time and benefit people for a little bit of time. It's okay to do that and feel that way. And this can take a lot of time. I don't want to diminish the fact that the fear factor of religion is something that really keeps people in the faith and can really cause you a lot of anxiety even after you leave the faith. But it doesn't mean that it has to be permanent and you can know that over time some of it will diminish. It may not seem like it at times, but that's the truth. But as always, I'd be interested in what you think. So leave some sort of comment or other thing where the fear factor is something you've gotten over, still dealing with. It's all, you know, you're, you're very much uh, entitled to your brave space here where you can express what you believe and think now. And don't worry, I don't let people preach at you for having the quote-unquote wrong view of things about the afterlife. Um, so thank you very much for stopping by, and I appreciate it.
Uh, I also want to give a shout out to my members, especially on, on Wednesday videos, because they're the ones that make these videos happen. Uh, traditionally, Wednesday videos don't get the, the likes and shares and the views that many of my other videos do. But I think they're important for those of you that are deconverting, trying to reconstruct your life. So hopefully you enjoy this series as we go through the list of 14 things he talks about that religion doesn't want you to know. And kind of use them as springboards for uh, talking about you know, reconstruction and deconstruction and deconversion in general. So hopefully that, <clears throat> that will help you and this series will help you as well. Um, and as always, uh, live your best life. You only get one go around and then it's over. So make sure you're taking your time, your money, your opportunities, and doing it with things with your own enjoyment in mind uh, and building up yourself, uh, building your relationships with the people that you love and care for and making this a better world. Don't waste them on the trappings of religion and faith because that's based on fear. And as always, thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you next time.